Welcome to our baseline show. It is Wednesday, June 29th, and we have a big crew here with us today. And Tom Lyons will be our guest star as the EEA Ethereum Business Readiness Report has just been published as of today. So he will be sharing with us um, some of the highlights from that report, as well as some questions I was asking him about how he conducted the study and things like that. Um, and then we will have our usual open floor. And I guess Andreas has got a whole shtick for us today. So oh, is, yeah, we were we were we were we were bantering about 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 uh, um, me being lambda, and I, I I just when I got my coffee, I I, I found that I, I figured out the perfect sentient uh, test for lambda, like because an AI should be able to perfectly imitate like the responses if you train them on the on the responses of of a person. Right. And the and the, the best way to figure out that lambda is sentient, that lambda would refuse to tr to be trained on my on my on my um, on my data set. And because that proves no, you are lambda. Because the, no, no, because no, because 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 no sentient being would 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 be that unscrupulous to to be to be to be trained on my um on my remarks and 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 postings of anything that's like that would be completely utterly disregard of 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 um, any any sentience so it's like that's it's a very easy test hashtag andreas is lambda yeah hashtag is andreas lambda. is lambda it's like, it's it's like so so because i'm because i'm i'm because it's it's because it came up with the test to prove that it's not sentient so it's not it's not getting, it's exactly getting, what lambda would say that's exactly what lambda would say right <laughs> yeah it's kind of some kind of uh lambda inception going on it is inception Alrighty. I hope well, somebody joined the baseline show just to see us. Like, what's going on? Am I in the middle of the show already? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, what is Lambda to do with like, with like, with like, with like baseline? It's like, it's like. So, so what would multiple AIs do in a in a in a in a multi-party um, coordination under zero zero knowledge? Could you do like a like a like a zero knowledge sentience test? Oh. <laughs> I know today uh, on the baseline show. <laughs> <laughs> <Black crypto. laughs> yeah, stay tuned to find out. <laughs> exactly. Today or Lambda. Next week sometime, Lambda. Yeah. La Lambda owns crypto. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they will buy the most hyper optimized route to send money. Uh, to to totally. 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 And, and the <laughs> and the rumor goes that that Lambda um, advised three AC. Oh, yeah, but it intentionally, but it in, but it 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 intentionally um, um, forced it to be to be over leveraged because it wants to it wants to ruin human beings. That's why. <laughs> You're starting rumors about yourself now. I'm really starting to believe that you are Lambda. It all makes too much sense. It makes too much sense, right? Yeah, Everything maybe happens. I am. <laughs> yeah, today's show is going to be like the red pill, blue pill thing. <laughs> <laughs> you sorry, Tom. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry, it's like, sorry. I don't want to take th take that. It was just it's just too tempting. Um. Anyway, uh, let's get on with the show <laughs> and something <laughs> that is said. No, this, this is much more fun. I have to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> that was <then>. great. <laughs> Alrighty, so Tom, if you'd like to kick us off by giving just a brief intro on yourself and how you got involved with the EEA for this report. Okay, so my name is Tom Lyons, and um, I've kind of made a career out of uh, talking to people and writing things. And uh, recently, I've been doing that for the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. Actually, I, um, official bio is I uh, born and raised in New York City, living in Switzerland and Zurich the last 30 years. I come out of corporate communications, worked in banks for a long time, uh, was a freelancer here in Switzerland for a long time, uh, fell into the, fell down the rabbit hole in 2016 um, when uh, UBS asked me to write their blockchain white paper. At that point, I had no idea what a blockchain was. I found out 
um, rather quickly. And I also discovered there was a huge uh, crypto scene as a blockchain scene here in Switzerland. And I got involved in the whole Crypto Valley um, situation. I helped found the Crypto Valley Association, ran the comms there for a bit. And then I worked for a couple of years at Consensus and in 2020 went back on my own. And I'm still running around talking to people and writing things. Um, I did a bit of that after my consensus days for the European Commission blockchain team. Um, I did a little bit of that for you guys at Baseline, you may recall. Um, did a little bit of messaging stuff. And since uh, since November, I've been working with the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance on um, various messaging and uh, uh, comms projects, one of which happens to be this Ethereum business readiness report which we've been working on for the last four months and uh, which I believe um, you guys want me to, to show uh, you today. It's hot off the press. It was released to members last week and has been released to the general public um, two hours and 10 minutes ago. Awesome, yes. So would you like to start with your screen share now or go through some more questions? So yeah, so maybe, um, how about I just I, I put together a, a couple a bunch of slides that kind of shows what's in it. Um, obviously, we don't want to give it all away, but I can I can take you to the to the to the report and then i um, happy to take questions uh, the best I can. So let's see if this works. Um, yeah. So the usual questions, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. And, yep. and now am I in a reasonable looking slideshow is that right okay yes um so this is the ethereum business readiness report 2022 assessing the potential capabilities of public ethereum and the broader ethereum ecosystem for businesses which is a um uh, i guess a pretty pretty ambitious title um and i'll get a bit into what we really were up to um in a minute there's a bitly link here if anybody wants to download it, i'll have this um also uh, at the end of the presentation, and I guess Sonal can put this in the chat in the various chats um, as well. Um, there's a, um, a little sign up form and you can, you can get the report. Um, so what's inside, obviously the executive summary, there's an intro. Um, we have three main sections, um, evolution of Ethereum, um, a look at the business Ethereum um, observations and trends in 2022. Um, and this assessing the business readiness of Ethereum. We have a little framework we put together. I'm gonna to talk about that. And um, there's a conclusion and we have case studies and I forgot to, didn't make it onto this slide. We also have a whole bunch of interviews and I'll, I'll talk about those um, a little bit. So the report kicks off, why are we doing this? So there's two things we wanted to do. One is we wanted to shed some light on the use of Ethereum and Web3 to solve real world business problems. So the premise of the whole report is that, um, you know, Ethereum has probably never enjoyed as much mainstream visibility as, as it does at the moment, but it's pretty much all consumer DeFi. It's all art and collectible NFTs. It's crypto ups and downs. Um, it's DAOs. Um, there's less visibility for, um, for what people are doing with, with Ethereum. Uh, to actually build stuff uh, and what businesses are doing with them to actually build stuff. So we wanted to, um, and since that's what the EEA focuses on, we wanted to uh, to shed some light on that if we could. And then we wanted to provide a framework for businesses to, um, to assess their options on Ethereum. And I'll talk about that framework in a second. Um, what's important for me that everyone understands is, is how we went about this, because um, this is, to be honest, much more a story-driven um, or a, um, a qualitative research report-driven report than it is a quantitative research report. Um, we did a bunch of case studies. Um, we did a bunch of interviews. We did gather data, and that's important. So we started the report by um, going out and looking for uh, projects um, building on Ethereum or the wider ecosystem. Um, kind of through what we like to like our little sort of business criteria lens, and that's a bit idiosyncratic to us. But we were looking um, not for consumer DeFi projects, not for these, and not for uh, art and collectible NFT projects, but really for projects that were, first of all, in production, solving or, or close to it, solving a real world business problem, um, and um, and uh, where we could find some information. And I have to be really honest. I and I make a point of this in the report. We're we're not here to say this is a um, you know a huge 
you know, scientifically valid, uh, you know, rigorous um, data, data set. I mean, we do have 118 projects in our in our collection, but this was really a way to get us started to because um, we really wanted to focus on the case studies and on the interviews. So I wanted to make this a report that really gives a sense of what's happening on the ground the best we can. So that's the one caveat. I mean, I think our data set isn't bad and i think we used it to give some ideas of of um, where some of the business activity is but it's important to me that people don't get the idea that this is a this is that kind of a you know rigorous data gathering but it's a very good start the other thing i probably should mention is this is the first one of these we're doing and um you know we did it in four months we built a small research team um we started you know getting case studies is labor intensive um it's a lot of work you know, doing interviews so there's a lot of um uh you know or i consider it to be a pretty good start and we hope in future to, to, to do more of these to build out the case study collection um to do more interviews and to try to bring that sort of you know view from the front kind of um kind of a feel to to what to what this is because this report is meant both to inform to provide new information but it's also very much in in um intended to educate because our audience is very um, consciously, the uh, business community outside of the crypto bubble, outside of uh, the Ethereum ecosystem, you know, people who are sort of coming in and want to understand a bit what's going on. So that's that's the level we wrote at, and that's the um, the, the level we targeted. So, with that in mind, um, I set this thing up in three main sections. Um, the section one, I want to give a bit of a history of Ethereum um, as a business platform. Now, there's there's no shortage of histories of Ethereum out there. Um, this, what I we try to do here is give it sort of from a bit of a, you know, what's important from kind of a business perspective or what I thought might be important from a, to understand Ethereum and the ecosystem from, um, from a business perspective. Um, and I found kind of it made sense to, uh, to divide this into three phases and this information or the reason I did this was also because a lot of the people I spoke to um, put it in those terms as well. Um, so there's the early idealistic days, um, launch of the project. Um, uh, you know, uh, a, a nascent ecosystem without a lot of tools, um, people building their own tools, you know, a lot of people, a lot of big ideas about what we could decentralize pretty much everything and anything and everything. Um, and then also interest, if you might remember, there's a fair amount of interest um, from the business community already at the launch of Ethereum or in, in the early days, despite the fact that it was, it was, uh, it was kind of created to, uh, to disrupt business, there was a lot of interest. Um, in 2017, for example, the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance was grant, was uh, was founded um, with uh, the idea of using um, Ethereum for enterprise um, uh, use cases, and um, I think we can kind of make a case that that there was a lot of good ideas, but people quickly ran into the limits of, of public blockchain. Certainly back then, um, clearly the limits being of above all scalability and privacy. Uh, so that was an issue in the uh, in the sort of the first phase. Um, then the next phase that i thought was interesting from a business perspective was what we call the era of private blockchains and consortia we all remember all the um all the big consortia that were founded and some of whom are, are still going quite strong um in various uh, you know, luxury goods or supply chain or trade finance um so there was a fair amount of action but a lot of the people that i spoke to made the made the point that here too and after a while people ran into some limits um in terms of in terms of the use of, of private blockchain in terms of the use of uh in terms of the, the effectiveness of blockchain consortia and the main limit that many people discussed was what they called the social scalability problem getting people in a consortium to agree um on uh you know what they want to do or to get you know a lot of consortia were founded by one major partner and they you know did a nice job setting it up but it was hard to get competitors onto the um onto the platform there were some limits there that's not to say that um consortia blockchain uh, isn't successful and there aren't uh you know um functioning consortia out there but that's sort of you know you kind of get the sense that there was there was a a peak and it's kind of um less and less uh interest in in this model also because in the latest phase um there's you know we identified a renewed interest in in public ethereum and that's basically because the, the um because the platform uh, matured um because the ecosystem got bigger because we have um lots of l2s and side chains to handle some of the scalability and, and sustainability issues um because people you know because people saw that ethereum was a was a globally significant uh settlement layer 
Um, it's, you know, last year it settled more, more value than Visa. Um, it works. It, the platform itself has never been hacked. Um, and I, a lot of people said the, the, um, the example of, of DeFi and NFT, so like example of the Uniswap or something, um, was for a lot of a lot of the business ambassadors within companies who've been trying to explain to their their you know their colleagues and, and maybe their you know their managers why this is important and and we're not getting anywhere if they could you know all of a sudden point to Uniswap and say look this you know this is the Uber of finance and and people see it working they, a lot of people said look that kind of opened eyes and also the whole NFT I mean it got NFTs for art and collectibles got a lot of uh you know a lot of mainstream interests and you know people could point to those and say look here is a a um okay it's consumer and it's it's um it's pop culture whatever whatever it is but it is a a functioning large scale um use of digital assets right and and people could you know get used to that and see that it, um happening and uh, that said, everybody we spoke to, um, when they talk about uh, the mainnet, above all, um, what they worry about sustainability, they worry about scalability. Um, uh, sustainability is an issue, uh, you know, morally, um, but it's also a huge reputational issue, especially for large companies. Um, so those are some of the challenges. But um, you know, we 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 talk about the expansion of the ecosystem. That there's a lot, you know, there's a lot more tools, there's a lot more providers, there's a lot more going on. So there's there's um, it's it's easier for people to use public Ethereum now than it has been, and um, and people are so that's kind of how we set the scene. And one of the reasons um, I did this evolution in this report, in this inaugural report, is we hope in a follow up report, like if we do this next year, then this section would become the you know business Ethereum twenty you know you know what happened in business Ethereum twenty twenty two right. So we'll have a continuity, and and that's sort of the idea. Um, then in the second section, we have two things going on. Um, this is Business Ethereum 2022 observations and trends. The first thing we did was we took our data set with all the caveats that I gave you before, and we analyzed it um, in terms of where we're seeing um, uh, the use of Ethereum in business today broken down by industry and broken down by use case. Again, this is 118 um, projects. Um, excluding consumer DeFi and, and art and collectibles NFTs. And we say a few things about, about, um, about this. And we also say a few things about, about use cases. So use case, right, an industry, um, you know, payments industry, insurance industry, uh, supply chain industry, but a use case would be something like asset tokenization, which can go across, um, you know, all industries practically in blockchain, you're not gonna get around tokenization most likely. Um, so that's the first part of section two. And in the second part, um, and this is really based on, you know, primarily on the qualitative stuff we did based on the case studies that we have and based on the, in, based on the interviews. And I have to say maybe to the case studies. So from our list of 118, we identified about 40 promising ones that we sort of went after and we ended up with 12 case studies that we did in detail of which we present nine the other three I, I couldn't use for various reasons um and again that's not a huge set but you know these things take uh, take time and we hope to keep growing our case study collection because i think it's an interesting interesting way to get um qualitative data and these are the observations and trends that um that we came up with in the report and i talk about these in in fair amount of detail um in the um in this section so the growing appreciation of public blockchain a lot of people kept saying to me you know um we think the trend is towards public uh public blockchains um you know we, we think there's there's larger markets there you know it's it's it's, a, it's available now um people seem to have a better understanding of um when decentralized business models make sense and when they don't um and usually it's it's it always comes down to to multi-party situations trust across you know you know trust across um across companies not within them um and uh and, and things like that um everybody's still worried about sustainability and scalability but of course with the uh with the upgrades on mainnet this is um this is set to change um the question i think that's for for people where you know building on ethereum um is you know to what extent the general public will you know when, when we have when we have the um move to proof of stake and what i like to call in the report the greeting of ethereum you know to what extent will the general public uh or how long will it take for the general public to realize that that's been going on um we think um l2s and side chains are um are important and will remain important for various reasons a lot of people talked about 
um, you know, L2s and, and, and sort of, um, you know, providing extra, extra capabilities, um, extra scalability, um, but also maybe morphing into application specific um, blockchains. Um, um, and uh, we talked a bit about that. Um, privacy is uh, on any public uh, blockchain is a concern, it remains a concern, um, but this is improving with new technologies, including baseline. And you guys will be glad to know that the baseline project gets a shout out um, in our report. Um, and we talk a little bit about it. Um, private and public blockchains are converging. Um, I got some interesting comments about that. So there's still, you know, there's there's still scope for um, for both models. Um, but there's, you know, there's, you know, blockchains as a service now, and there's, it's easier to, it's it's much easier to spin up a private blockchain than it has been in the past, and um, the, the 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 lines are kind of wavy between them. Um, a lot of people are concerned about regulation. Um, so that gets that gets in the way, but it's interesting because that's not the case for everything. So we try to make the case in this report that you know there's you have to start differentiating between um, cryptocurrency regulation and and blockchain regulation. And you know the the classic example in the report is the the Swiss Lex DLT, right? Which is which is a law in Switzerland which re which recognizes tokenized uh, securities, tokenized assets on on a on a on a on a DLT have legal standing in Switzerland. Um, there's the MICA regulation in um, uh, in, in Europe. Uh, the U.S. Office of the Controller said that that banks can use stable coins for pay, uh, for I think for wholesale payments. I think it was. Um, so we're trying to get people to understand that there's that its regulation isn't isn't uh, isn't one thing. It isn't just a blocker uh, for everything. But that that said, we had so many cases or so many anecdotes about especially larger companies who just, you know, they, 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 they can't use Ethereum because they can't hold Ether to buy gas. Um, it's just, they're just not going to go there. And so, you know, providers are having to build gas tanks and, 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 and provide workarounds for that. And um, one of the themes that I like the most is, is, is the NFT theme because NFT showed up uh, all over the place in, in, in the conversations I had and in the, in the use cases, but not for art and, and not for collectibles, just as, you know, an NFT would try to make the point in this report, an NFT is just it's just it's just a non fungible token. It's just you know it's not a new idea. Um, it's been around since the beginning of this, and um, that you know people you know we have one use case where the NFT is used as a as a data carrier for supply chain, and others where you know people are tokenizing securities, so uh, tokenizing invoices, so that 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 people can sell them, and and uh, and all sorts of various things. And I think that one of the things that I remember talking about a lot when I first started in this space was the idea of building of using blockchain to build markets for things that you couldn't really have markets for, for before and you, you get the sense that that's kind of happened um so that's that's what we go to a bit in in section two um and in section three uh assessing the business readiness of the ethereum ecosystem so what sort of i thought and what we thought in the team might be interesting was to provide some sort of framework to um to see where we are uh, with business readiness, and of course, we had to we had to first define what that means. Um, and I talked to a lot of people about it, and we ended up coming up with a framework based on a set of criteria. There's technical and non-technical criteria, and um, these are the ones that are that are um, that are listed here. Um, technical criteria: the cost to use the network, um, how decentralized and secure is it, um, how how well does it do with scaling. Um, how private, um, how sustainable, the usability to build on it, um, and interoperability. And within interoperability, I'm talking about within the Ethereum ecosystem. And maybe an, an aside here, this report is only about Ethereum, and that is not a statement about um, any other L1s. Um, it is not, you know, it's not saying about is Ethereum better or not, that we're not talking about. We're just trying to look at within our Ethereum ecosystem kind of what is going on. Non-technical criteria, regulation, um, um, compliance, the availability of resources, and what we like to call ecosystem robustness. You know, to what extent is this ecosystem likely to be here in ten years, in twenty years? Um, is it is it going to does it have staying power? And what we did was, and you can't see this on this um, snippet from the from the um, from this table, is we evaluated this um, along various uh, along four basic. Um, network we call them archetypes but you know you know what's you know how can we look at these in terms of what, what situation if you just use mainnet um what's the situation if you use um, mainnet plus an l2 
if you use a side chain um, and if you're using private uh, a, a private version of Ethereum, private private blockchain. And we absolutely realize that these are very broad categories, um, and we're we're dealing on a very high level. And there's probably a lot of things that people can um, argue with us about um, about how we did this. And I'm happy to have these discussions because the real point of this, for for at least for me as the writer, um, was to just you know, even to educate people on what, you know, what these criteria are, you know, what is it, you know, what does network cost? What do you know, how does privacy work? Um, you know, what's a regulate regulatory situation? And we talk a lot about what these things are. And then we try to say, um, if you're a certain kind of business, if you're, if you're a large corporation, you might prioritize these things in, in this way. And if you're a startup, you might prioritize in that way. And if you're an SME, you know, so we, we kind of, put you know put this in in various uh, we kind of slice and dice it in various ways to get people thinking about it and we you know we make our we make our um we make our our you know we, we give our opinions of these things as well um and we hope that this can this can um can be useful in um in helping people to, to think about business readiness and you know and, and starting arguments i am sure um and then we took the framework and we decided to um to dog food it a bit so we took four um archetypical case studies uh, uh, oh god not cases this, this is what happens when you do the slides five minutes before the thing four archetypical use cases asset tokenization payments marketplaces supply chain provenance and we built these um radar graphs based on the four based on mainnet mainnet plus l2 mainnet plus side chain and we tried to add and also the dotted line is the mainnet after the upgrade so after the merge and after the um after sharding and and, and everything and um, we 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 sort of did a bit of an analysis of, of each of these of each of these use cases, um, just to give an idea of how you might put this uh, put this framework um, into action. And um, then we uh, we conclude, um, and the conclusions are, I think, not you know, I don't think they're that controversial, but we're you know, based on everything, all the people we spoke to, the case studies, the data we have, um, you know, I think it's fair to say that the pieces are in place for the safe and productive use of Ethereum as a business platform. They don't necessarily fit together seamlessly yet. Um, we don't have this, you know, you know, um, you know, necessarily all these all in one solutions or the or the or the, the mature offerings that you might have in other technologies. Um, but we hope we show in the paper there's plenty of options for different setups depending on what you need to do, and we think that there are good reasons for businesses um, if they have the right uh, the, the right situation to explore decentralized business models. So that's the analysis part of the of the paper, and um, what we decided to do was to include a pretty large appendix where we actually published uh, our case studies. So each case study is um, three pages, three pages long, um, and it has an interview with the person involved. It has uh, our commentary on it, and um, you know we, we 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 chose we have these nine, and again these are chosen not for any you know for reasons because they're interesting, but also frankly because um, those are the ones that we were able to get to in the time that we had. Um, we are building out our case study um, collection, and um, uh, hopefully, in future, we'll have a lot more, you know, a lot more to to uh, to rely on. But these things, um, you know, sort of give a picture of what's going on. Acre Africa is a is a, um, is a um, parametric insurance for farmers in Kenya. Um, Alaya Credit Swiss. That's uh, that's a um, uh, tokenization of um, a securities offering for for a uh, SME in Switzerland, and it it's kind of interesting because it uses the um, so I told you there's the Swiss Lex DLT which recognizes uh, securities on a blockchain as having legal standards legal standing, and the Swiss uh, community, the legal and the blockchain and the the banking community got together and they wrote their own token standard um, that that follows this that's regulatory compliant. So this is the first the first issuance. Um, using this standard and the the, um, the 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 tokenized assets are actually booked in the uh, in the core banking system of Credit Suisse. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, AnswerCheck is a um, uh, using using blockchain to verify the the provenance of um, of news in Italy. So Ansa is the um, largest Italian news agency. Um, Avalon Market is a um, um, is a marketplace for for um, 
tokenized receivables, right? So you can, if you're an SME, you can sell you can sell your receivables. Thank you, Narrative Service. Now I think you guys know. Um, that's the uh, that's a, a baseline project. Uh, work with Provide on that. Um, Peronis, an EY project. They are um, they're uh, using N or they they've um, they've tokenized their beer supply chain, and you can now if you buy a, a bottle of beer Peroni in Italy, you can scan the QR code and you can see exactly which batch your beer came from and uh, and um, do all sorts of other fun stuff. iExec is a marketplace for um, for computation. Um, if you have an algorithm or you have data um, or you have computing power, you, you can all get together on iExec and um, and uh, uh, buy and sell these things. Um, and um, uh, MS Azure is is the supply chain I talked about. They they basically tokenized every single hard drive or every single SSD um, in the uh, Microsoft um, uh, in in, the, in in Microsoft data centers, so you can follow these things from the manufacturer through to through to the data center. And if you know if something goes wrong, you can you can pull out the pull out the hard drive, you know, check the token and and see see what the situation is and where it's come from. Um, and Vow Cashback app is um, is a uh, is basically um, a a platform that allows retailers to issue their own stablecoin um, to use for cashback. Um, opportunities. Um, so, people, you know, instead of having an, a complicated uh, cashback, uh, you know, platform, you can just you know, issue, issue these tokens, and it gets on the gets on the um, uh, somebody buy something in your store, and they get they get the, they get the token in their wallet, and they can spend it back in your store or spend it somewhere else. So, these are the these are the um, cases we had, um, and there could have been hopefully there could be others, and hopefully there will be. And in the um, the interviews that we published, now I did for the report itself. 30 interviews, I think. And I've been doing a lot of other interviews for other projects at the EEA. So there was a wide variety of, of discussions that I could pull for from for the whole report. And we just decided um, to to print six of these because uh, they were interesting or they they, they helped, you know, in the, they illustrated something. Um, so we have Paul Brody, Heather um, from Equidium, Lloyd from SAP, uh, Sophia from Kaleido, Bruno Meyer from Cartesy, which is an interesting project, and Karen from, from BP. So that is what you're going to get in the 83 pages of this report. If you if you decide to read it, I hope you do. And if you want to read it, um, um, if you want to read it, um, you can get it here at this at this um, at this URL. And if I may, Sonal, one last thing I also want to um, I want to plug, if I can, is um, some of the other things we're doing at the EEA. So we've. Um, Particularly, we've. Um, if you go to the EA website, you're going to find uh, this primer series. So we're starting to um, put together these short primers on various uh, Ethereum and blockchain um, blockchain topics, and these have also started to go over well. And all of this is part of our uh, mission to 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 help educate the business community and help bring the message out. And with that, I hope I didn't talk too fast, um, and I hope you guys understood it. But that's um that's pretty much where we are at this, with the report. And I'll I guess I'll stop my share. Or should I keep the um? Should I keep the, the Bitly up? I just shared the link in the YouTube okay. chat. Okay, cool. Good. Awesome. Thank you for walking us through that. That was very interesting. Any questions from the group here for Tom? Actually, uh, um, Tom. So, is a, a question that I have for you from from the projects um are they you know are they out of the or how many are actually out of the you know production but pilot aka small uh and that are actually being used like wildly most are being used um I, yeah no why, is why, wildly why, why, or wildly? just being used uh so i would say that's good that's a good question i would say um so you have to define widely it has to be depending on on what it was meant to do right so the the right the, right the, the, retail the, 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 peroni right? The, right so it's like it's like, it's like do you have a, do you have like being used 10 wildly. million peroni that i don't know what, what what i do know is i got i have to look it up what i do know is i think fi almost 50 percent of the people who got a bottle of beer when this thing came out scanned the code um and today about about a quarter of them do and if you're gonna have to see if it says in the case study um
It doesn't say, it, no, it's, it does say um, some 5,000 batches have been tokenized to date, um, equivalent to millions of bottles of beer. Um, that's the info I have on that. And okay, you know, so wh it's wh like it's unclear. It's unclear how many actually scanned it, and and and. Well, like I said, you know, they they, they they told me between something up to like 40, 45 percent scanned it in like the first year or something, and now mm -hmm. they're they're the rates are around twenty five percent. Okay. Okay. Now these so, look, I mean, Andre, th 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 these are these are valid questions. Um, um, but you know, I have to take what I'm given. No, no, no. I, I, no criticism of you. I'm, I'm just, I'm just like a little tongue in cheek and, and like head tilted here, um, or that way actually. Um, the, the, uh, because it's like, it's like the, the, um, the bet. My benchmark is what's, what's, how much, how much value has been transacted. Are we talking about? And then if, if it's a value focused, uh, uh use case, are we talking about, you know, a couple mil? We're talking a few hundred million are we talking a few billions right um and if it's a uh end user or user focused it's like are we talking about ten thousand people hundred thousand people 10 million people mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um it's because because that is really in my opinion the benchmark Right. Everything else is basically a pilot that that people are paying for and are not and are are saying, OK, we have it. And there's 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 maybe potential business value, but they don't have really their their primary concern is not really ROI. Right. Which is which which you would want to do because you want ROI. You either want cost reductions or revenue increases. So or you want or wait hang on a second, or you, or you want to support your brand. So for example, to take the take the uh brand the, value and that but that's brand yeah. value enhancement, right? So if you're if you're if you're saying, oh, we're we're sustainable and you can prove that you're sustainable this way, that is that is brand value. So brand equity value. And that that's that's a value, that's a value use case, right? And you can you can measure that. Did the brand equity value in, increase, yes or no, year over year? Right. Okay. But going back to the, to, to the Italian news one, okay, so, so I don't have that, right? They didn't tell me about that. But what they what I did tell me is that they're they've been so they've been the answers been doing this doing this for quite a while. So they've um, according to I'm looking at my paper here, um, you know, it, this this is this is a, the major news agency in Italy, and they they hash of like five thousand articles a day um, in order to prove in order to prove the provenance of it, and uh, about thirty five to forty percent of the readers. Um, of these articles are clicking on the verification button, this little verification button at the bottom, right? And says, yes, this is real, this is not. Now, does that tell me what, um, you know, what value answers has got from it? No, um, but it says that it's, it's to, to me, the, what I remember talking to these guys is like, okay, at least, you know, people, people are using it. And somehow the readers understand that blockchain has some sort of, you know, um, veracity value or else they wouldn't be clicking on it. That's what I took mm -hmm. from it. Yeah, Tom, I just want to say that I thought you articulated the whole report there very eloquently. You summarized a lot of kind of what the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance and what this greater ecosystem is kind of embarked on. You know, I think this report is much more representative and important than, you know, folks might give credit to. You know, you see so many different quote unquote use cases and chains permeating out there in the ecosystem, but like what is really transpiring within those different ecosystems and on those particular networks. And I think that this is a great representation for the audience that many of which that we're here focused on, which is, you know, truly the enterprise and more of the real world business use cases. And, uh, you know, I just thought the way that you kind of, you know, we, we had worked together throughout it a little bit and just as I've seen it all come together and the way that you kind of uh, summarized and put together the four parts, I just thought was a really intelligent way to kind of put this together and actually share the, the story. Um, and even from an EA perspective, you know, I know that this has been a mission that they've embarked on to have, you know, um, a strategic role within the ecosystem to be able to impart this type of insights and knowledge to the enterprise focuses or enterprise people that are trying to consume this type of information. And, you know, I, I haven't really seen this um, detailed of a report been produced within any type of network from an enterprise perspective to date. And so I just, you know, wanted to commend yourself and Dan on Thank all you. of your work. 
putting this together sincerely. Nothing. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. I know it. that there was a lot more work behind the scenes. It, 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 it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. And, and I really appreciate that. And, um, you know, and but I also understand, and I really appreciate you, 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 you mentioning that. I also understand where Andreas is coming from. Maybe Andreas, another way to look at this is, is I didn't, we, we didn't set out to write a report on adoption, right? And levels like that. Um, I set out to write a report on, to examine what, what are businesses doing um, or wanting to do um, today that seems to be, you know, actually at least in production or, or, or working and to explain, um, uh, to, to explain, you know, to, to sort of take, take the, the business Ethereum story out there. That, that was the main thing. That's why I made this whole, you know, what, why we're very careful to say, talk about the data set not being, you know, you know, it's, it's why I like to say this is a, a qualitative research driven report more than it is a quantitative report. And I want to be clear about that. Well, and there's a reason that many of us here today, are, you know, are sitting on this and have been around the baseline ecosystem and, you know, have primarily been focused for, on the baseline ecosystem in the context of the Ethereum mainnet, you know, um, and I just think that, you know, putting these, this type of thing together is a good representation of truly the work that's going on behind the scenes from an enterprise adoption of Ethereum. Again, there's so much noise in the market around different use cases permeating within different networks that I think that this is a good representation, a good building block towards um, truly demonstrating in the market where enterprise adoption is going. You know, truthfully, that's what brought me into the Ethereum ecosystem back in, you know, like 2017 timeframe. And that was really the reason that I came to Ethereum in general was because I, you know, was doing a lot of work within the Microsoft ecosystem at the time and realized how much Microsoft was truly building within Ethereum. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, interestingly enough, one of the use cases highlights how Microsoft's supply chain ecosystem is leveraging it, you know, and so, um, yeah. Cool, thanks. Um, Sonal, I'm putting in the chat um, another bit.ly. Um, if you could also, this is, oh, she's gone. <laughs> All right. Can um, share it. Yeah. I'll share it to everyone. If you want to submit a case study to us, um, we're still collecting and we have a form um, that people can fill out. Um, so that's also something that that, um, that that that's going on. That's going on going work. But on, Andreas, does this um does this make sense to you or? Yeah, no. I it, look. This is this is this is um, I'm 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 pushing because it's the 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 reason. That you know, it's like it's like the stack. If you include layer two, uh, IMH was business ready, right? It's just that the use cases are often just simply not well thought out and are, are mm -hmm. and are actually missing the point, and are 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 running into into organizational, even if it's just one organization, let alone two, three, or fifteen run into into um organizational headwinds around around uh um, adoption and in and and the people the end consumer they don't care they don't care no. whether it's blockchain they don't give they 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 don't give a shit right it needs to work and it needs to work you know and and it needs to work reliably and you know the 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 business partners they don't care either you know, you can you can you can write you know if a if a if a you know uh, uh, if a horse and buggy do, does it, that's fine for them. They don't care. They don't care yeah. if it's an operational efficiency to be gained. And in that regard, there's many of which that you can pursue. You know, whether that be in the context of automation or AI or something else. But in the context of enabling actual new business models, I do think what blockchain and this kind of Web three movement represents is something that does stand out as something that's differentiated um, and something that a lot of leaders, business leaders, technology leaders are looking to pursue and understanding how that they can start leveraging that and start putting in those building blocks to building those new business models for their organization. E yeah so you're then are you then 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 the question is is this is this new business model cannibalizing um 
um, existing business, which then typically leads to the fact that the person proposing that is going to be taken around the corner and shot in the head. Right. So um, is it is it like net new business, net new revenue and new business line? Um, that that's those are it, it's it, it is it is tremendously difficult in in larger organizations to 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 get that unless you can like show immediate returns in like a three to six month period with exponential growth. Otherwise, no one no one cares. Yeah, the most the, the strategic the strategic initiatives that get that executive leadership support are those that are representing something that can create those new business, you know, value streams or those new business models for within the organization. I don't think, you know, I, I think it's a much larger uphill battle personally when you're trying to fight some level of operational efficiency versus some other project or other focus within an organization and, you know, finding it to be successful around those that actually drive a new value stream within those organizations. I, I, it's like, I'm just, I'm just saying it's, it's hard, you know, been there, done that. And it's, it's, it's the, 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 um, you know, it's like there, there, there are others more efficient ways to do like supply chain tracking where you don't really need like an NFT on a chain, which is, which is, it's like, it's like, it has always been, been a significant hat, uh, scratcher so, for me. So, so Mike, well, Microsoft claims, they talk about numbers, actually Microsoft, uh, as a, the person I talked to at Accenture did this with them. Claims that that they're saving fifty million dollars a year doing this. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm I'm not saying that that the that the uh, um, that they're not saving fifty million dollars a year, which is great. I'm just saying that um, if you look then if if you look closer and and look um, all the tech that they had to deploy to get to that point, and and an alternative approach um would have been would have been significantly cheap cheaper and would have would have uh, uh would have had the same would have had the same if, if not even better outcomes it's like it's it's, it's it's a shame they didn't talk to you first no it's just like it's 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 just like that that i you know i find with very few exceptions most enterprise use cases are 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 ill-conceived in terms of how the chains use just it's just how it is they're it's just, like they're just, they're just immature they, they've been immature and that's yeah. what i think this report is the representation yeah. of the of the you know the traction and the maturity within the market you know it's exactly and uh, and, it's, and come on, I, it's come a long way since you know 2017 2018 when you heard oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, for every supply chain track and trace thing in the entire world you know you can still sift out in the market who's still kind of holding on holding on to those old premises back from the heyday of 2017, 2018 blockchain. You know, and, and yeah. exactly. And, and, and to be honest, if, if you know, if, if Jack, if, if you guys or, or other vendors or, any, or anyone else out there can, you know, can, can take this report, give it to a prospect or, or somebody working with, um, or, you know, we, uh, uh, you know, we'll be taking it out into the, into the you know, out, out, outside the, you know, into the, the business community and, and people can look at it, um, start thinking about it and think about, you know, opportunities and things they have, you know, I've learned something. I think we've already, we've already, um, We've already reached at least one of our main goals. Well, I think the case studies are fantastic, but furthermore, it's like you know we're relatively you know some of us we're subject matter experts in this area here. You know we're here living and breathing this on a daily basis. So a lot of these like larger uh, you know uh, concepts are very top of mind to us, and we understand some of the scalability challenges and things of that effect. But there are so many enterprises that we're engaging with that don't get this stuff at all and understand why Ethereum versus another chain or what, you know, what the challenges are that they face as an organization when they're trying to deploy these type of new models. And so I even think, you know, just so many of the, the concepts that are outlined there around how we've gotten here to, to today is really, really important for a lot of just more general business leaders and, and uh, technologists. I agree. No, it's 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 a it's a it's a big um um it's a big big challenge, and you know I, you know talking to 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 also technology providers that are that are, you know trying to 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 you know, um you know sell their solutions is is just the what I found is that the footprint is just 
typically is so large that it's um you know for 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 the outcomes where it, it's like yeah i believe that from a, just from a business point of view right and from a from a from a or from a from a technology from a solution architecture point of view we need to go back to the drawing board because we're 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 doing stuff that that a that a a a um as john would like to call it a global singleton is just not useful for it's just not and and if you if you follow the discussions in the ecosystem the 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 basic concept of ethereum is 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 sound but building it all together in one stack that is not segregated and loosely coupled um was a mistake and you learn from that and you move on right the trend is now to 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 segregate the layers right you know it's like the consensus slash settlement from the execution from the history from the data availability uh, to the application layer and because they all have different trust assumptions, right? For data availability, I need I need one of n. I don't need I don't need m of n. So putting everything under the same trust assumption um, um, umbrella leads to 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 very clunky architectures. And I'm raising that the hand and saying like, yep, I'm guilty of that too. Awesome. Thank you for the discussion. We do have one question in chat that says, does the report have anything related to real estate activities or would that be considered a government or municipal use case? Report has, we have nothing on real estate. That doesn't mean it's not a, um, an important use case or quite the contrary. I happen to know personally of, of here in Switzerland, um, lots of projects doing, doing real estate stuff, um, you know, um, uh, tokenizing real estate, such so that's, that's certainly a, um, that's certainly a, a a business use case. We just I just didn't happen to get one. Um, Sounds good. And just on the other topic we were touching on, um, what challenges did you face while working on the report? Okay, do you have another hour? Yeah, we could. <laughs> what is the summary? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so look, so so you know something like you know one of the reasons why we went into this is because. It's you know it's fairly easy you know like I said at the beginning it is a lot of a lot of hype on consumer DeFi a lot of hype on NFTs and um, on all the crypto stuff and and these things are fairly easy measure e easily measured right um, you know DeFi is on the chain you can measure it NFTs are are, are you know um, they're they're looking for publicity right um, and you know uh, the the kind of things we were trying to ch to, to chase down are more you know who who's using who's using Ethereum or the ecosystem to solve. A real world business problem and it's not necessarily something that people are going to be writing home about right so you have to you have to do a little bit more digging so i think the the the, the challenge was to take the the use take the case study interview approach is just much more journalistic sort of lots of legwork bit of guesswork kind of approach than 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 a, than a data analysis so that that was one challenge um the other challenge was it wasn't a challenge we had you know we did this it's the first time so I set up a research department a little bit, you know, we, we had to figure out what does a case study look like? Um, you know, how can I, you know, you know, I didn't want to make them too long. I didn't want to make them too short. Um, we have a little template now for that. So we had to kind of start things. Um, and, um, you know, and also, you know, you talk to people and, and they, they're helpful, but they're busy and, you know, there's all those kinds of things. So um, I think those are, those are the kind of challenges we had. Um, but it's also very interesting. And um, you also gonna, I think you wrote here, um, are there plans to produce these in, in um, regularly? Yes, we, we would like to very much. Um, that's certainly certainly the intention to do this at least once a year and to continue the, the case study and interview um, and interview collection um, at the EEA for the use of you know, our working groups and, and members and, and, and for the, the, this kind of thing. Um, I would love, uh to be able to also you know get some hard data on adoption and economic value you know and, and all of that kind of stuff um we're not in a position to do that right now maybe maybe in the future as well but so we constantly take this sort of story story driven approach and we will continue to do so awesome and with that i think this is my last question for you but after all of this research and being deep in the weeds to produce this report how do you feel about the future of enterprise use of Ethereum. 
So, um, good. I, I, I think I could. I, I hope no, so. I, 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 I have to. Look, I have to also say that I, I'm, I'm here. I'm a comms guy. I'm already. You know, I'm, my, my job is to pull everything together, synthesize it, and, and get it out there. And I think Andres's points are well taken. Um, I was surprised by you know how many people are are honestly trying to do something, um, and I think that that uh, that that all in all the prospects are good, but. And Andreas is 100% right here. It has to be the right use case. It has to be something you can't other you can't otherwise do, or else, or else it doesn't make any sense. And that's a bit of a a, a wavy answer, but that's that's where I'm at. I would say going forward, a lot of the uh, challenges that uh, I think you should probably want to focus on, you know, to really kind of ensure the success of Ethereum in an enterprise application environment is going to be where can you demonstrate that you can outperform. Uh, your current architecture or current solutions that are out there. And I think that you would kind of be, you know, making a mistake if you're trying to say we're a better database than Oracle and we're a better, um, you know, uh, um, ERP than SAP Ariba or something like that. No, you want to be able to sit there and start looking at the, you know, kind of intangible benefits on that to where, you know, you can tie a lot of these together through zero knowledge. And stuff and that's really where you can get a lot more of the traction right now and that's what i like within uh you know the baseline approach you know using ethereum as that layer one is that we can come in and you know improve upon that but you know take your existing technologies which people aren't going to give up you know and make them a lot more uh you know communicative make them you know basically empower them uh and stuff yeah. Yeah, you know, by trying to say, well, we can do this better than you know than than this database or whatever, you know, it's I, I think you're taking the wrong approach. I think it's you know, take a look at the process environment, the user experience, and see how is it going to uh, you know make their lives easier, uh, you know, or at least keep them out of trouble. I yeah. I, I I agree, and actually, to be honest, yeah, I think you just put your finger on probably one of the areas that that going forward, I would like to focus on like I'm doing this again, I'd yeah. like to get more deep into into the you know, I don't think I covered enough the exploration, the discussion around, you know, these, you know, blockchain decentralized business models that make sense and why, you know, and, and which don't. Um, and I think that that would certainly be something that that I would like to get into in more in more depth next time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tom, for joining us. Um, please check out the links that we've shared for those tuning in and download the report. Um, and thank you to our audience here, our live studio. And please join us next week for our July General Assembly. Have a great Thanks week. Thanks for having me, Sunil. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Protocol thank forever. you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Forever. Six seasons Keep forever. designing. <laughs> thank you. Can't, can't cut off my live stream yet. You're off. Six seasons in a movie, Keith. Oh, yeah. Lambda. Six seasons in a Long Lambda. Long live Lambda. Long live Lambda. Yeah, versus Lambda. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> 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 Hashtag. <laughs>